Well, joined on News of Prime by the former Johannesburg Mayor Mpopalata in studio tonight. A very good evening to you, ma'am. Thank you for your time. Um, so you were approached, as I understand it, first last year to run for the position. By whom and why? Well, several people within the Democratic Alliance approached me last year. Um, there is a sense within the DA that we need a change in leadership, that we need to inject new energy into the leadership structures of the party uh, in order for us to connect better with the electorate. Uh, we're not growing as fast as we would like. There's much competition now, many new entrants in the space, and we do need to reconsider our stance as the Democratic Alliance. I've campaigned for the position of mayor in the city of Johannesburg. I've engaged with many voters who have increasingly and over and over expressed that they would like to see a DA government. They believe that in the DA government's um, brand of good governance, however, there is this trust deficit. And I feel that as a party, we can do more to address that trust deficit in order to bring the electorates on our side. How high up does the support from the people who approached you go in the DA? Are these people who are part of the federal executive? Well, I'm not at liberty to say um, who those people are. I believe that with the endorsements that are coming, uh, people will put their hands up and say that they're endorsing me and that they support my candidacy. I don't think it's my place to do that. However, yes, significant people within the party have asked me to put my hand up. Would you have done it had you not been approached? Well, actually, I've been mulling over it um, for a while. Actually, um, whenever people criticize the party for not having representative leadership structures, I always look at myself first and I ask myself, have you put your hand up? And to be honest with you, I joined the DA in 2015 and I've never put my hand up to be in any leadership structures of the party except at a local level. So um, I do think I have a responsibility to change the face of the party if I really want to see the party grow, not only myself, but I hope that I'll see many more people across the country doing the same. You only joined the DA in 2015, as you say. I wonder if you think that is an advantage or a disadvantage knowing how politics goes and how having allies sometimes works to your advantage? Well, I think everybody in the DA is aware of where we are as a party. I think the data speaks for itself. Um, we would like to have grown beyond where we are currently. There's new entrance that's beyond our control. Uh, we do need to look at how we rebrand ourselves as a party in order to speak to the types of um, electorate that we would like to attract. And I think many people within the party share those sentiments. So in the bit that we played from your briefing earlier, you said that um, at the moment you want basically to take the DA to a point where it does not only appeal to certain groupings. By that, do you mean that it largely, appears to, it largely appeals to white South Africans? Is that what you mean? So that's the sense I'm getting on the ground. As I said, I campaigned to be mayor in Johannesburg, and it was very eye-opening, the conversations I had with a lot of people, where I was convinced that people are convinced of our good governance brand. So there's no question that where the DA governs, we govern well, that we are the better party in South Africa to govern. However, many did express that they struggle trusting the DA, that they struggle relating to the party, that they're not sure that the party sees them or is even aware of their plight or that their plight is addressed enough. Now, that's not always true, of course, but those are perceptions. And perceptions need to be managed where they're untrue. And to what extent is it true, though? Because perception has to flow from something, right? Well, there's been a lot of propaganda. It is politics, so there will be propaganda from the opposition, of course. Um, but I've noticed, and, and I studied this a lot during my mayoral campaign, that in fact, um, if you look at data, if you look at stats, say, um, published data, you'll find that in many instances and across many metrics, you'll find that the DA actually offers better governance even to the poorest of our communities across South Africa. However, it's not spoken about enough, and our people aren't even aware of it. But you've also got comments that have been made by the likes of of Helen Zilla about colonialism and how, it, by her version, we all benefited from it in some way, even though it was built on the foundation of suppressing and basically abusing black people, right, on the continent. You've got the DA policies on issues around affirmative action, uh, black, broad-based black economic empowerment, which are seen as being very much by people against where South Africa needs to get to in still almost 30 years into this democracy, getting black people to the same level economically where, even as that SA reports show, it's still white people at the very top of the economy. So that is about more than just propaganda. Those policies have also played a part. So let me address the two points that you bring up. Firstly, you talk about Helen Zeller's statement. I believe that she made that statement in her personal capacity. Um, it's not necessarily the DA's position. But and she is the 
basically the face of the party, let's be honest. I don't think that it's fair to say that every member of the DA speaks on behalf of the party each time they have something to say. Um, I think if you look at the history after that statement was made, you will see that even the party um, took that on and, and there were some developments out of that. So I, I wouldn't say that that is a DA position. Let's talk about our economic justice policy. If you look at the Gini coefficient in South Africa, we've become, since 1994, the most unequal country in the world. Our Gini coefficient has increased, which means the gap between the rich and the poor has increased under, under the ANC's triple BEE policy. Now, we can all agree that that policy is not working. What we've seen is that we've created a, a black elite with people who are politically connected, benefiting over and over again from opportunities. What the day is offering is different. It says that let's, let's use a scientific approach. Let's do means testing and look at whether or not people are really disadvantaged and whether or not they deserve to be prioritized for opportunities. When you do that, you will systematically exclude people who have benefited over and over again. You'll begin to narrow the gap between the rich and the poor because you'll begin to reach uh, more of the poor. Mm. And that's what will eventually um, deal with inequality in our country. The NC policy is not doing that. But even if you, so even if you took that approach, right, when you look at, um, let's say, black people, the black elite who've benefited over and over again and an ANC government. It's also still a very small group, so it would not, would it, address the fundamental issue that race plays a massive role in whether a child born in uh, Gobo Gobo in the Eastern Cape and one born in Sant into a white family pro succeed or progress at the same level. But you're actually supporting what I'm saying. The ANC has done nothing to address inequality. In fact, it's only worsened under the ANC's triple BEE policy. What the DA is offering is different. Unfortunately, we've never governed at a, at a national level. And you but what are I'm aware. saying to you is at the core of it is you cannot disassociate race from how it's happened overall because while there have been black elites who've benefited, they're very much still in the minority. Hence why so many black people are still poor and precisely because of where the apartheid government put them and yes, they were subsequently failed by the ANC government in the years post-94. But all of that is to be read together, correct? If you're asking me if race matters, I would say definitely race matters. I think apartheid systematically prejudiced a lot of our black people. However, if you're going to address it only based on race, you'll make the mistake of continue to benefit the same politically connected few. And that's mm. why the DA is proposing a different approach, which is a more scientific approach, where through means testing, we'd be able to establish whether you really previously disadvantaged or not, and only those who really deserve to benefit would benefit. So if you were to be elected as DA federal leader, you would then push ahead with the current set of policies on issues such as race and economic uh, development and prosperity for all, basically. Our policies evolve all the time. They get reviewed all the time. I believe in our policies. In fact, our policies are the reason why I joined the DA in the first place in 2015, having compared with other political parties. But yes, what I do feel now is that they've not been workshopped enough. So the person on the ground doesn't understand what our offering is. If you ask the person on the ground what the DA's economic justice policy offers, they will not actually be able to tell you. The, at face value, it looks as though it, 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 it discounts race as mm. a factor, when in fact it doesn't. Um, the, the, this policy actually says that you cannot base your economic growth policy on race only only because we've seen the ANC do that and we've seen the creation of a black elite at the expense of the many black people who remain poor to this day and a widening gap between the rich and the poor. So you're saying you don't think the issue is DA policy, the issue is that DA policy has not been sold properly? It's not been sold properly, it's not been workshopped properly with the people that it was crafted for. I believe that if the majority of South Africans understood what the DA is actually offering, they would buy into it. But of course, against the propaganda, and I think um, you know, our, our efforts as well could be better in, in explaining and, and bringing it to the level of the people in a language that they understand what it is that we're offering them. I believe that they would understand that the DA policy is actually better. So the path that you're taking has not ended well for other black candidates in the DA. Musi Maimani came and went. Before him, Lindue Mazibuko came and went. Uh, Mbali Nduli actually ran against John Steenhazen at the last uh, conference, come and gone as well. Why do you think that you will survive, whether you win or not, as a member of the DA and as a leader in the party? 
But I think they made their own decisions to to leave the party or whatever decisions they made. Um, I could do the same. I could decide to leave, but I'm deciding to change the narrative. Why? Because I believe that South Africa needs the Democratic Alliance. I believe that in 2024 we have a very good chance for the first time to bring the NC below 50%, and I believe we're going to need a good group of coalition partners to take this country forward, and I see the Democratic Alliance being the largest opposition party at a national level currently as a big player in that space. However, it's important that we grow and that we take um, a lot of the electorate share from the ANC in order for that to happen. I believe that I can take the party forward. I've got experience. Um, I've worked in government as a technocrat. I've worked in the private sector. I've run my own business. I have worked as a politician, both in government and in opposition, and I've led probably the biggest uh, multi-party government in the country when we had nine political parties in Johannesburg in December 2021. I believe that with all that experience, I will be able to take the party forward. At a mayoral level, that was short-lived, was it not? I mean, this time last week, you were mayor of Johannesburg. It, it fell apart. People say, basically, your national office set you up for failure because they wouldn't make certain concessions to the Patriotic Alliance, Action SA, and the broader coalition. Do you believe that's true? Were you failed by national? Well, I mean, um, our coalition partners believe that that's what happened. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to get into the detail of what happened in the last few weeks. Why aren't um, you allowed? Well, the FedEx ruled that only our spokespersons can talk about this, and I have to abide by the ruling of the FedEx. I've chosen not to um, dwell on what happened. I've chosen to rather look at where the country is going. I care about this country. I'm a South African. I quit my profession because I care about this country, and I wanted to contribute meaningfully to the direction this country mm -hmm. takes. And I choose to really invest my energy in seeing how I can contribute in taking this country forward. But where's the harm in the interest of... In pub because of public interest, firstly, um, if you're in a democratic organization that appreciates um, honest discussion and opinions around such issues, where would be the harm in you speaking clearly publicly, in fact, about where you think um, DA national leadership could have done better in managing the Johannesburg situation? Because your coalition partners don't seem to have a problem with you personally, but they say the issue is with the people at the top. Yeah, as you rightfully said, it was a FedEx decision. It was not my decision. So I think um, it's best to ask the FedEx members or maybe John or some of the people who were part of that decision. I didn't decide that I shouldn't speak. I certainly spoke internally. I spoke to the FedEx as well. Um, it was not my decision. But like I said, I Are don't want to... Are you able to tell us what you said when you spoke to FedEx? Uh, but that's discussing the very thing that I'm not allowed to discuss. I'm not about to be charged by the party according to the party's constitution. Um, I've got to focus and I need to remain focused on that. And has the launch of this campaign informed that decision to be as disciplined as you can be as far as not discussing issues around the coalition because you've been very clear in not going to that detail. Well, I'm generally quite disciplined. I observe the parameters of the party's constitution. Um, I do think that it's important for cohesion within the party, but it doesn't take away the right for me to put my hand up and say, I want to take this party forward and see if we can't attract more of the electorate. Do you expect that if you do succeed, or even as you run this campaign, that you and the old guard, quote-unquote, in the party would be able to function in harmony? Because you know yourself that in the past, what, four or five years, there's been criticism about how the old guard has come back in the DA. There's been uh, what analysts have said is a pandering to the, o the old, predominantly white voters for the Democratic Alliance because the party had at some point um, lost support to the likes of the Freedom Front Plus, and that's why there's been a reversal of that. Do you think you and that stance will be able to work? You and Helen Zilla and the others will be able to work in harmony? So I've worked with Helen um, throughout my mayorship. I've worked very closely with her because of her experience in the city of Cape Town where she ran a multi-party government. Um, I believe that I will be able to work with, with whoever that I have to work with. However, I would like to see an injection of more young talent uh, within the DA. I don't think that it's healthy for us to maintain and retain a lot of the old guard. Um, I think the party is evolving and South Africa is evolving. And if we're going to be in touch with the electorate, we need to be evolving as a party. Why can't John Steenhazen achieve that? Well, I don't know. You need to ask him. Has he done a good job? <laughs> of doing what? Of uh, being leader of the party, the position that you're now challenging him for. I think he's done the best he can within his capacity. Has his best yes. been good enough? Well, we don't bring the same capacity to the table, as I've already said. I, I, I bring a lot more to the table, and I believe that I can take the party further. If you weren't running, would you vote for him? Um, I, pr I probably would. I don't know. It depends who, who else is running. Um, very briefly, before we end, so you've now left as Joburg Mayor. 
you've heard the minority coalition says you've left a mess, the finances need to be fixed, services need to be taken to all communities, rich and poor. What's happened there? Is there anything that could come out in the wash in the coming months that shows that you as mayor failed? Unfortunately for them, we were very open with our residents on why the finances of the city are where they are. We were very open on why we were not able to attract the same DBSA loan that they now want to bring to council. We took the same loan to council twice and they rejected it. Mm -hmm. They rejected it because they wanted to engineer our failure. They knew that not bringing in that money would affect service delivery negatively and that's why they did it. The funding model of the city includes loans. We get funding from own revenue, we get funding from grants and subsidies from national government as well as provincial government and we also get funding through loans. They know this, they know it was part of our funding mix and they frustrated it in order for them to today be able to say exactly what they're saying. Dr. Mpopalazi, good luck with your campaign. Thank you for coming in tonight. Thank you.